OP's Syl gave private information to her ex with schizophrenia, new update. I am not op. This is a repost. Original BORU by U, writer Sharp. TW. Mental health, schizophrenia, psychosis, delusions, death, suicide, less than. Op is U, uncertainom original posted to R, relationship advice. Posted on July 29, 2022. Sill told my ex with schizophrenia the time and location of my baby shower. Using a throwaway account as I don't want this to easily get back to my ex-boyfriend. All names were also changed. TLDR below. Trigger warning for schizophrenia. Mental health issues. This story needs a lot of background to fully grasp how severe everything is. So buckle in. My ex-boyfriend Jake, 27M, and I, 27F, broke up a few years ago. We had been together for over five years and were thinking about marriage and buying a house. Together. In the last year of our relationship everything fell apart. Long story short he had a sudden psychotic episode and was placed in a mental health ward. Mental health facility attached to hospital. This is in Australia FYI. For his safety. Following this his entire personality changed and he developed delusions. Hallucinations and paranoia which never went away. A large part of his paranoia revolved around me controlling people around him and thinking I was. Trying to make him look crazy. He also constantly accused me of cheating on him and told me many times that he hated me. He was let out of the hospital after some time and I took responsibility for him. This change in him was heartbreaking. He was eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. I did everything I could to be there for him. I went to all of his mental health appointments and stayed up at night to make sure he didn't leave. The house alone. He was prone to wandering out at night when experiencing psychosis. Things became too much for me to handle. He became angry and his paranoia about me made it impossible to help him. He didn't trust me to be close to him but at the same time he didn't want me to leave his sight as. He was convinced I was cheating. When he seemed to be doing a little better mentally I broke up with him. I waited until I felt he would be okay on his own and helped organize for him to move back in with. His parents. I was filled with guilt for that decision. But it was the right choice for me. I was struggling. For months I received no love and was used as an emotional punching bag. I did my best. He wasn't the same person anymore and his resentment for me was intense. Obviously this isn't the full breakdown of his mental health issues as a lot of the things he went through are very personal. I never blamed him for what happened. But I needed to be happy and did what I needed to. It was a messy breakup but it went better than expected. We kept talking for a little while as friends. I think the entire time we kept contact he assumed we would get back together at some point. I continued helping him when I could. When I started a new relationship with my current partner Sam. 30M. Jake had a really bad psychotic episode and threatened both of us. He accused me of cheating on him with Sam before we broke up. Which makes no sense as I met Sam after we had broken up. And sent both of us intense messages. I managed to contact Jake's family who got him the help he needed. Following this I cut all contact with Jake. It was obvious that we couldn't maintain a friendship anymore. The only slight connection I have to Jake is my brother's girlfriend Jess. 29F. Her and Jake have been friends for years and have maintained their friendship. She knows the entire background to our relationship and never chose sides. I would say I am close with her. We have always been friendly. It always made me happy to know that Jake still had a good friend to confide in. Shift forward to March 2022. I got pregnant with Sam's baby in January and was three months pregnant. I had just told my family and close friends about the pregnancy. I told everyone to keep it quiet as I didn't feel ready to publicly announce it. I was incredibly emotional. 
nauseous and in no state to deal with any potential fallout at that point. Less than 24 hours passed after telling my side of the family and I received a phone call from Jake. He had found out I was pregnant and left a voicemail saying he would be filing for custody of the baby? Obviously he was in a psychotic episode so I ignored his calls and let his family know that he had reached out to me. By this point it had been over a year since we had even spoken. He has no idea where I live or work so I'm not worried about him showing up physically to confront me. I knew the only way he could have found out would have been through Jess. I called and confronted her about it and she admitted to it. She was extremely apologetic and said she didn't think it would matter. She thought he would be fine with the news and said he deserved to know. I was upset by this. But I hadn't explicitly told her not to tell Jake so it could have just been a mistake. Even though I told her to tell no one I bit my tongue to keep the peace. I forgave her but made it very clear that she shouldn't tell Jake any more information about me or the baby and she agreed it wouldn't ever happen again. I didn't hear anything from Jake for months. Last weekend was my baby shower. Sam and I had the baby shower together. It was more of a party than a traditional baby shower. We hired a function room at a bar and invited 80 people to come celebrate. We were all having a great time until I saw Jake standing at the bar. Looking around, I managed to slip away without him seeing me and grabbed security to get him escorted out. The area had been roped off for us as a private function so I simply told them he hadn't been invited. I watched as security approached him and asked him to leave. He was furious and started yelling demanding to talk to me before he would leave. Sam and several friends went over to him to try and talk him down but it only escalated. He screamed at Sam, claimed that he was the baby's real dad and that we had never really broken up. At this point I left to hide in the ladies room until my mum came to let me know Jake was gone. He had eventually left after a little more screaming. I was mortified and we cut the baby shower short. I couldn't stop crying. It's now been a few days and I confronted Jess. She is the only person who would have possibly told him the location and time of the baby shower. I wasn't as kind on the phone with her this time. She admitted to telling him and apologized, but said, how could I keep this a secret from him? Dot quote, I was furious and told her that she would no longer receive any news about me or the baby and that I would cut her out of my life. I'm not proud of it but I screamed at her. I couldn't believe how irresponsible she had been. It wasn't her news to share. My brother called me after and asked me to forgive her. He knew she was wrong but he didn't think he should also be punished for what she had done. He knew that by cutting her out I also wouldn't be telling him any news about the baby. In part he thought I should blame Jake for his reaction and not Jess that she hadn't known he would show up. The damage was already done and I should let it go. I honestly don't blame Jake for what happened. He is mentally ill and needs help. It's not his fault and I know he will regret all of this when he comes back to a more clear head. Space. I told his family what had happened and they told me he was readmitted to the mental health ward. He had threatened to harm himself if he wasn't allowed to see my baby. Regardless of whether I think he is at fault, I definitely don't feel safe with Jake now. I have a child to think about and him thinking it is somehow his is pretty scary. I haven't budged with Jess or my brother. My family all think I should forgive her so my brother can meet his niece, nephew. We don't know the sex. But I just can't trust her. She already broke my trust once and I'm furious. I could have been hurt if Jake had confronted me at the shower. So many things could have gone wrong. I don't know what to do. I'm heartbroken that my brother may not get to meet this baby for a while. But I'm scared that she could tell Jake information about the baby that could put us in danger. My parents and other family members have all agreed not to tell Jess or my brother any information about the baby upon threat of also being cut out. 
I just don't know how long I can feasibly cut them out before I crack. Sam is obviously on my side with all of this. If it wasn't for him I would be in a much worse state. Any advice would be appreciated. I'm finding it hard to stick to my guns on this and worry that news will leak to Jess from other family members. My parents were particularly hesitant to promise not to tell my brother when the baby is born. TLDR. My sister-in-law told my ex with schizophrenia the location and time of my baby shower. Even though she has already had one warning and has been told not to tell him anything. My ex somehow thinks the baby is his. I decided to cut Sill out after this event but need advice. How can I keep her cut out when it means pushing my own brother away? Update posted 4th of December 2022 to our relationship advice. Backslash. Update. Sill told my ex with schizophrenia the time and location of my baby shower. After I. 27F. Made that post I was overwhelmed by the response from everyone. Thank you for all of the amazing advice I received. It definitely put everything into perspective for me and made me take things more seriously. Decided I should post an update as I received a lot of messages asking what had happened. I received a lot of comments doubting the motives of Jess. 29F. And unfortunately you guys were right. So, I had my baby earlier than anticipated. I'm happy to announce that Sam. 30M. And I now have a beautiful son. He is currently 10 weeks old and was born at 38 weeks. We are absolutely smitten with him and couldn't be happier. Not long after I made my original post Sam and I moved into a new house. We had been living in a one-bedroom apartment and decided we needed more space for our growing family. Part of our decision on our house was that it was further away from my brother and Jess. Our apartment had only been a five-minute drive from them and I felt uncomfortable knowing that Jake. 27M could potentially be visiting and we could run into him while walking the dog. I also didn't trust that Jess hadn't told him where we lived. Our new house is now a 45-minute drive away from them and I feel much safer. We didn't tell them the location of our new home. We had been living in our new house for about a month with no issues. I heard from Jake's family that he was on an extended mental health hold at the hospital as his. Psychotic episode was not subsidizing and he refused to take his medication. I also warned them about his relationship with Jess and they seemed to take it seriously. They would keep an eye on them and told the hospital that she was not to be allowed visitation with him. My family stopped pestering me to forgive Jess. My mom had a heart to heart with me and finally understood why I had to cut my brother out. I didn't hear anything from my brother. Apparently my mom had stepped up and had a conversation with him about the severity of what Jess had done. It broke my heart to push my brother away as we had been so close. But after reading all of your comments I knew that I had to be responsible and keep my baby safe. Unfortunately, things didn't stay so calm. After a few months I received a call from Jake. He had finally been released from the hospital and was embarrassed about his behavior at the baby shower. He told me he knew that the baby wasn't his. He cried and asked to speak with Sam. He wanted to personally apologize to him. Sam didn't want to talk to him. I told him I forgave him. I knew it wasn't his fault and that we should move on. I was also very firm with him and told him that under no circumstances would I let him be around me or my baby. If he tried to contact us I wouldn't hesitate to call the police. He accepted that and our conversation ended. About two weeks later Jake showed up at Sam's workplace. Demanding to speak with him. They had a short conversation where Jake broke down in tears and begged to be forgiven. From what Sam told me he didn't seem to be stable. In his apology he said, I'm so sorry for confronting you in public like that. I should have spoken to you privately. Clearly you didn't know the baby isn't yours and you were humiliated in front of your friends. 
Paraphrasing here, Sam didn't want to provoke him so said he accepted his apology and asked him to leave. Sam then called me to let me know what had happened. I was shattered. Obviously Jess had told him where Sam worked. I called Jake's family to let them know what had happened. They told me the next day he hadn't come home and were extremely worried. He wasn't meant to be driving as his license had been suspended. He had been caught speeding several times. But he had taken his mom's car without her permission. A few days later he was found by police in a building that was under construction. Completely out of it and confused. He had driven 20 hours away from our town. He was taken to the local hospital and placed in their mental health ward. His family flew up to retrieve him. To this day I still haven't heard any updates on Jake. I assume he is still in a mental health facility. His family always updates me when he is released. After all of that my brother called me and asked if he could meet up with me for lunch one day. He sounded upset on the phone so I agreed. We met at a McDonald's. Then he told me all the crazy stuff that had happened with Jess. Apparently when Jake got out of the hospital, following the baby shower incident, he had shown up at their house to see Jess. My brother was really worried because he could tell that Jake was in a manic episode. He kept an eye on Jake while he visited and noticed that he was being extremely touchy-feely with Jess who started to seem flirty with him as well. It made him really uncomfortable so he made an excuse about him and Jess needing to go to a friend's house. When Jake left him and Jess had a massive fight, he confronted Jess about the flirty behavior and she was extremely defensive. She flat out denied that she had been flirting or that Jake had been touching her at all. My brother decided to drop it. Not long after. We later realized this happened on the same day that he had gone to Sam's workplace. Jake showed up at their house again but this time Jess was at work. My brother works from home. Jake told him that he was in love with Jess. Confessed that they had been sleeping together and showed him a bunch of text messages between the two of them to prove that he wasn't making this up. My brother asked him to leave. When Jess got home he confronted her. At first she tried to deny it but eventually confessed. She begged my brother to forgive her. She had realized after his outburst at the baby shower that she didn't love him. My brother was furious and told her to stay with her parents for a while. Ever since then he hasn't heard from her. It's been months now and it looks like things are over between the two of them. My brother feels terrible about what Jess did to me. Although I want to let him back into my life fully I still don't trust that he won't eventually get back together with Jess. The two of them haven't officially broken up and until that day comes I won't be sharing my address or photos of our son with him. So far my brother has met our son once at my parents' house. I still don't know why Jess decided to tell Jake about my pregnancy. But I'm so glad she isn't in our lives anymore. I haven't heard anything from her or Jake since. I'm constantly worried he could show up again. I've developed some strange OCD behaviors after it all. Needing to check that all our doors are locked five times and touching all of the windows in our house before I can go to sleep. Other than that things have been peaceful so far and Sam and I have been able to enjoy our new life. As parents. New update posted 9th of May 2023 to you, Uncertainom. Backslash. New update. X with schizophrenia update. I saw so many lovely comments on the original post made by another Redditor on my situation on BORU. Figured I may as well give an update as I received a lot of messages. So this is for anyone that may pass through and see this. Unfortunately I don't have great news to share in this update. One good thing. My brother did officially break up with Jess. Our relationship is still strained after what happened. But we are able to talk and be civil now. Also my life with Sam and our new baby has been amazing. Being a new parent is definitely hard. But I've been loving every second of it. I haven't gone back to work after my maternity leave. 
Thankfully Sam makes enough that I can be a stay-at-home mom until I decide I want to go back. So on to the news with Jake. I didn't hear anything from him or his family for a while. I heard not long after making my last post that he was on a longer-term mental health hold and then had radio silence. I took that to be a good thing. Not hearing from him usually meant he was doing better. About a month ago I received a strange text from Jake at 2 a.m. I didn't see it until the morning. The message made no sense. He was talking about seeing someone who came back from the future. That he was being followed and needed to hide. He mentioned the movie director Christopher Nolan and how he had seen hidden messages in his movies. And he was going to win a million dollars with numbers that were hidden in his movies. Honestly. I've received similar messages from him before so I wasn't too put off by it. I took a screenshot of the message and sent it to his sister so she knew he had contacted me. Then I kind of forgot about it. His sister didn't get back to me though. Which I did find a bit strange. She normally messaged me back pretty quickly. Two days later his sister called me. She was crying on the phone and asked me if I had received any other contact from Jake that night. I told her no. She explained to me that Jake had passed away from suicide that night. Only hours after he had sent me that message. He had apparently sent the same message to about 20 people in his contact list. I don't know all of the details but apparently that night he had managed to steal his mom's car. Again. She had been hiding her keys from him but after ransacking the house he had found them. He went on a drive around the city. No one really knows the details of what he was thinking. But he rammed into another car and pushed them off the road. They slammed into a tree. Thankfully they weren't majorly injured. I later found out it was a young 17-year-old couple in the car. It was a hit and run. He apparently sped up behind them on a quiet road hit them from the back and sped off. It was all caught on a dash camera. With the timeline we have it seems he sent his message to everyone only 15 minutes after the accident. About 3 hours later he had passed away. I won't be sharing the details of that. His funeral happened and I decided not to go. With my complicated relationship with Jake it just didn't feel right to me. One weird thing. Jess went to the funeral. I only know because she took a selfie crying at the funeral and posted it on Instagram with a caption preaching that we need to do more about mental health and supporting people. I was disgusted. It was incredibly hard to hear what had happened. I'm still processing it all. I feel guilty to admit this. But I also feel a sense of relief that my family doesn't need to be worried anymore. I do miss him though. I think I already grieved him when he changed in our relationship. It's hard to know he is physically gone. I can't even imagine what his family must be feeling. It's difficult for everyone involved. I'm so sad that it came to this. Obviously we all hoped he would make a recovery. That one day his psychosis and mania would just disappear completely. He was a good person. Just a person that was impacted by mental health problems I wish there had been a better outcome to. All of this. The grief of a person you loved being gone. But at the same time relief because they can't hurt you anymore is a terrible experience. Poor oop. Schizophrenia is terrifying and cruel. I really wish we had more effective treatments. Poor oop too definitely has lasting trauma. So on top of Jess being a liar, a cheater, and directly contributing to Jake's decline, he might have gone downhill regardless. But egging him on with repeated updates on Oop definitely can't have helped. She's also tacky enough to post a crying selfie? From a funeral? If you have to take a picture of yourself crying to prove you're sad you probably aren't actually. That's sad. You just want attention and sympathy. Jesus. What a roller coaster. I'm glad there didn't seem to be a bunch of ignorant teenagers harassing Oop or victim blaming. At least. 
I hope Oop has someone to talk about all of this besides Reddit. I can't really blame her for feeling relief that someone is dead. But after being in a constant state of panic and developing OCD tendencies. Yeah, as harsh as it sounds. She finally will have some peace. Fuck Jess though. Other than her being the main character. A narcissist. Or being amused, turned on by Jake suffering. I have no idea what her endgame was here. This is very sad. Oopsil likely long term had a huge contribution to Jake's loss of life by helping him stay in manic. Psychotic state. I wish there was more help for people. So, how long before Jess is trying to get back with Oop's brother? Auf. My brother has schizophrenia and it is a never-ending challenge. This is my worst fear and it has almost come true many times. I feel for everyone in this. That's awful. As someone with mental health issues and who's gone into psychosis episodes it's a struggle and she handled everything so well. Unfortunately some people just don't take their own mental health seriously or like how they are. Off them. It's a sad story all around. Jess needs to sit down and take a long hard look at her abysmal life choices. That poor family in the oop. Mental illness is a true nightmare. Not just for the person suffering from it but everyone around them. I hope Jake has found some peace in his family and oop can grieve and heal from all of this. I still don't know why Jess decided to tell Jake about my pregnancy. Probably trying to show Jake that Oop moved on so he should focus on Jess. Or Jess was pissed that he still mentioned Oop when with her. So she gave him info to ruin stuff for Oop out if jealousy. What a sad story. As hard as it is to say. I think Jake is in a better place now. He was suffering in life and it seems the severity made treatment extremely difficult. In the lucid moments he realized the damage he was doing. How he hurt the people he loved. How very sad. Oop loved Jake. Grieved for losing Jake. Built a new life while still caring about Jake's well-being. Oop has nothing to feel guilty of. Life was sadly unfair to Jake. Not trying to be spammy. But our, schizo families is there for anybody that needs it. Sadly, about 510% of people diagnosed with schizophrenia commit suicide. I believe it's more common in those that vacillate on and off medication and in younger patients. And I just want to note that here in America there are millions without access to mental health care. Fuck schizophrenia. I hope Jake haunts Jess for the rest of her sorry life. I remember this story from before. What a mess. Hopefully, Jake can find some peace. I'm sad, but unsurprised at this outcome and I hope Oop and her little family have a lovely, bright, Jess-free future. Jess is a whack job and a drama llama. Feels icky to say. But it almost seems like Jess was actively trying to exacerbate Jake's mental health issues. Like, if she and Jake were having an affair, why would she keep directing him to Oop? Presumably she'd want him to stay away from his ex. Her behavior is far more inexplicable and bizarre than Jake's. He suffered from psychosis. She suffered from terminal asshole syndrome? What was the end goal? Wherever he is. I hope Jake is able to find peace. And I hope his family and Oop are able to move past this. One weird thing. Jess went to the funeral. I only know because she took a selfie crying at the funeral and posted it on Instagram with a caption preaching that we need to do more about mental health and supporting people. Says the woman who started a relationship with a man who was unable to consent. Oop is right. This is disgusting. The only person I don't feel sorry for is Jess. Poor Jake. If you enjoyed this video, 
please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.